All right, you guys ready for your headline to make some noise? Please, make some noise. Next guy coming to the stage performs all over the country, all over the world. In fact, he's been on Comedy Central, Showtime, HBO. Please give a big round of applause for Manny Oliveira. Traveling through the South, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, anybody from those places? How the fuck would they find this? Because <laughs> when you work in the South, they put you up in these cheap hotels. I'm staying in this one hotel, I called out on the front desk, I said, I got a leak in my sink. The guy said, go ahead. <laughs> Man, the people in the South are so friendly, everybody's so friendly. I'm staying in a hotel lobby in Birmingham, Alabama. I turned around to this one dude and said, how do I get downtown? Boy, look at me and said, downtown? <laughs> he said, well, hell, I'll take you. I said, no, you won't, Sling Blade. Get the fuck away from me. <laughs> Driving through Alabama, I see this big building with this huge sign that says, Custom Mounting. I thought it was a whorehouse. <laughs> so I went in. Boy, looked at me and said, well, what do you want mounted? said, me? He said, well, we usually mount deer. I said, that's fucked up. So it's all the same to you. I'll take a woman today if you don't mind. You squirrel fucker, goddamn. Worst thing about being in the South is them state troopers, especially in Mississippi. Mississippi state troopers always like to hide by the side of the road, wait for somebody from New York to drive by. I had a couple friends of mine from New York driving through Mississippi, got pulled over by the state trooper. State trooper walked up to the car tapped on the driver's window, driver rolled down his window, took his nightstick, he said, whap, knocked him clean out. Boy came to you and said, what was that for? He said, boy, in the state of Mississippi, state trooper walk up to your car, you better have your license of registration ready. He said, damn. Gave him the license of registration, goes back to the car, checks him out, he's all right, brings it back to him, walked around to the passenger side, tapped on the passenger's window, passenger rolled down his window, took his nightstick, he said, whap, knocked him clean out. Boy came to you and said, what was that for? He said, boy, I'm making your wish come true. He said, what do you mean by that? He says, I know you Yankees. Said about four miles down the road, you'd have turned around to your friend and said, boy, I wish he'd have tried that shit with me. <laughs> Sometimes, though, the police can be very helpful. I got stopped one time in Tennessee. Cop walked up to the car. He said, sir, we're going to have to search your car for drugs. I said, well, thank God, because I can't find the shit. I know it's in here somewhere. Bring the dog over here. I think I left the shit right here. Man, I tell you, it's better to be here than where I was last week. I was in Miami last week on South Beach. Have you been to South Beach? Have you been there? Ooh, some shit going on down there. I was lucky enough to meet a woman, beautiful woman, nice five seven, nice big tits, nice tight ass, and the biggest dick I had ever seen. <laughs> Well, I did a reach around, you know. Really, I grabbed on. I said, God, I hope that's me. <laughs> there's a lot of Cuban people down there, too. Any Cuban people here? Cuban people? Cuban people. <laughs> I can't swim this far, can they? No. Now, you see a Cuban person here. That's somebody saw Miami, got pissed off. He said, fuck Miami. I'm going to Rhode Island. And I'm afraid of Latin women. Latin women scare me because they have a look. They have a look that'll kill the average white boy. This girl in Miami looked at me. The look shot through me, shot out my ass, killed four white people standing behind me. And she tried to intimidate me, but I'm not going to run like a bitch. Hell no. She said some shit to me in Spanish, just pissed me off. She said, 
And I know Spanish, so I just came right back at her and said, uh-huh. <laughs> Donde esta la biblioteca, bitch? <laughs> then she started coming toward me, so I went to plan B. I ran like a bitch. <laughs> And Latin men are no better. I feel sorry for single women in clubs because Latin men always stare them down. You ever see them? They always stand there like this. They're always like. Hello. <laughs> my name is Carlos. Do you want to touch my pee pee? <laughs> see all these loving couples here? It's always nice to see couples. How many people here are married by applause? Married people, where are you? Yes. Single people by applause, where are you? Yes. So much more to live for. It's just, I'm not married, I used to be married, but unfortunately my ex-wife <laughs> fell down the stairs. Yeah, seven times. Don't feel sorry for you because she's a lazy woman. I remember one night we were laying in bed, she turned around to me and she said, whisper something dirty to me. I said, the kitchen. <laughs> Clean that shit up. And I was a terrible husband. I'm the first one to admit it. I was a terrible husband. I remember one time I was in Chicago getting ready to buy a plane ticket. Guy standing in front of me getting ready to buy his ticket. Woman me on the ticket counter had large breasts, you know? So he walks up to the ticket counter. He says, uh, I have two pickets to Tittsburgh. <laughs> he gets embarrassed, walks away, just so happens to sit next to each other on the plane and look at him and say, hey man, what's the matter? He said, I just did something real stupid. I said, oh, yeah, what's that? He said, I went to buy my ticket. Woman me on the counter had large breasts. And said, I said, I want two tickets to Pittsburgh. I said, I want two pickets to Tittsburgh. I said, well, don't worry about that. Shit like that happens all the time. I said, just this morning, I was sitting with my wife at the kitchen table, and I meant to say, honey, would you pass the post toasties? And it came out, you fucking bitch, you're ruining my life. <laughs> I fucked up. <laughs> But I gotta tell you, I'm always taken with the resourcefulness of women. Women know what to do in every situation. No matter what. My ex-wife one time went out and bought a book. A book called 101 Ways to Spice Up Your Marriage. So she reads this book, you know, and then she comes to me and she says, Okay, here's what we're gonna do. She says, I'm gonna get dressed up real sexy. Then you take me to a bar. Drop me off. Then wait 20 minutes. Then you come in the bar, but act like you don't know me. And try to pick me up. I looked at her and I said, you have my permission to fuck somebody else, go. So finally I said, okay, fine, fine, we'll do it, we'll do it. So she gets dressed up, you know, I take her to the bar. She goes in, I wait the 20 minutes, I go in the bar, I see this woman, I buy her a drink. My ex-wife walks up to me. She says, what are you doing? I looked at her and I said, who the fuck are you? <laughs> but it's hard to have a relationship, especially when you get older, you know? Like, I'm going to be 30 in a couple of months. And <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Could happen. Maybe I'm just sick. Anyway. So I'm trying all kinds of new shit. I'm trying this internet dating. Anybody ever try that internet dating? Have you tried that shit? Really, how did it go for you? Oh, you're here with three other women. Very good. Money well spent. No, I joined this new site, this uh, snatch.com. Have you been on that? I get on this site and I'm looking at these pictures. All these women are showing me pictures of their dog. I don't want to see your fucking dog. Really? And they all say the same thing. Oh, I love my dog. He's my pooch. He's my baby. I love my dog. I love my dog. If you love your dog that much, you don't need a man. Really, you need a dark room and some peanut butter. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't you? Who's worse, the one who said it or the people who knew what he was talking about? 
Don't judge me. And I know a lot of people don't like the internet. I have a friend of mine who will not go on the internet. He says, oh no, they're outsourcing all the jobs. They're outsourcing all the jobs. I don't care if they outsource the jobs. What I hate is when those outsourcers think we're stupid. And they say shit to us to make us feel stupid. You ever call them up, you always hear the same thing. Oh, thank you for calling technical support. <laughs> this is Brian. <laughs> hey, Saji. Put Brian on the fucking phone. <laughs> and now we're all there worried about immigration. Everybody, oh, the Mexicans are coming. The Mexicans are here. The Mexicans are here. <laughs> now, if we want to solve future immigration problems, here's what we do. When the Mexicans come over the border, right, we grab them. <laughs> then we give them all, like, Valium. Okay? <laughs> when they fall asleep, we throw them in a truck and we drive them to, like, Montana. And when they wake up, they run into Canada. <laughs> I'm Manny Oliveira, and I approve this message. <laughs> Any Canadians here? We don't have Canadians here, do we? Thank God, those fucking people. <laughs> well, I had a guy from Canada here at the show last night. He says, you know, Canada has an army. <laughs> I mean, shit, on a good day, our Salvation Army could kick their ass. I mean, you just hear ding a ding a ding. Ah! Um, I see all these young people. I love seeing young people. It's always nice to see young people. They're so vibrant, so full of life. So I see old people, too. <laughs> How old are you, sir, if you don't mind my asking? 53. 53. Oh, you look great. <laughs> Holy shit. God just let his fucking ass go, didn't he? It's not a crime to be old anymore. Hell no, because we got that Viagra. That's right, you got to call grandma's house before you come over now. Grandma home just honking the bobo. That's right, but you can't give a black man Viagra. Hell no, you give a black man Viagra, he'll start knocking shit over. Be like, what the fuck? not to put that shit there. You know I'm on the Viagra. I saw a blind black man on Viagra. Didn't even need a stick. We're just... Are you taking Viagra, sir? Are you? What? Only on the weekends? <laughs> no, big night for you tonight, baby. That's right. You can depend on it. Holy well, shit, I'm gonna take Viagra when I need it. Hell, if they didn't have Viagra, the best I could do is just stand around her head and drop it in. <laughs> Mom, move around. Now we got that other shit that Cialis, it's supposed to last 36 hours. <laughs> like there's 35 hours and 57 minutes wasted. <laughs> and they always tell you at the end of the commercial, they always say the same thing. If you have an erection for more than four hours, please consult your physician. <laughs> Fuck that. Unless my physician's gonna blow me, I ain't gonna call him. Hell no, I'm gonna see Alice, I'm gonna see Joni, I'm gonna see Susie, I'm gonna see Mary, I'm gonna see Nancy. I'm seeing everybody. And we're the only country in the world that doesn't revere our older citizens. And it's not easy to get old. I mean, I had a friend of mine had to put his dad in a nursing home. He felt terrible about it. First day his dad woke up in the nursing home, he had an erection. Nurse came in and gave him oral sex. As soon as she was done, he called his son. He goes, son, thank you so much for bringing me here. <laughs> He said, this morning I woke up, I had an erection, nurse gave me oral sex. He said, well, Dad, I'm glad you like the place. That afternoon, he's walking down the corridor, he falls down, orderly, runs over, lifts up his gown and pumps him right in the butt. As soon as he got done, he ran back to the phone, he goes, son, you gotta get me out of here. He said, this afternoon, I'm walking down the corridor, I fell down, orderly, lifted up my gown and pumped me right in the butt. He said, well, Dad, you gotta take the bad with the good. 
This morning you had oral sex. This afternoon you got pumped in the butt. He says, no, son, you don't understand. He says, I get an erection once a month, but I fall two or three times a day. <laughs> What's wrong with you? But I do love the young people. I love the young people. How many men here are under 25? Men under 25, where are you? Men under 25, where am I? Fucking Florida? <laughs> Just, men under, oh yeah, my nephew there, 18, you're 18. What? 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 What, I gotta show up on fucking Tourette's night in Rhode Island. Right? <laughs> No, see, my nephew's in there, he's 18 years old, hard as a rock, young buck stuck. God, you can have sex anytime you want, see? I'm over 40, I gotta be selected. Ain't much hump left in this rump, I'll tell you that right now. So. Men reach their sexual peak at 18. Nick, you're at your, your sexual peak? What the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> really, I mean, you reach your sexual peak at 18. Ain't that some shit? You figure at 11, they ought to give us a manual saying, you know, 18 coming up, here we go, come on. 18, the only sex I had was like a magazine in the hamper. I had socks could stand up on their own. I swear to God, I did. Now, Nick, I know you're here with your parents. Tell me right here in front of your mother, how many times can you have sex in one night if you had to? Come on, how many times? Tell me. Come on, make your mama proud. Because mothers hate that. Mothers will sit there and go, my son is not having sex. He is not having sex. He is not having sex. Fathers, on the other hand, will say, he's fucking everything. I gotta lock the refrigerator. Oh, God. But I gotta tell you, you know, it's, it, it's strange, because when you, get, when, you, when you turn 40, you wanna look younger and feel younger. You know, how many men over 40 by applause? Men over 40 by, men over 40 by applause. Really? You, you gotta turn that shit up. <laughs> you know, you turn 40, you wanna look younger and feel younger. I just read in Esquire magazine that men over 40 are using this shampoo, this horse shampoo. It's called mane and tail. Horse shampoo. Who in the right mind uses horse shampoo? So I bought some. I tried it. You know, my hair looks good. Only problem is I shit in the street twice today. I didn't even stop either. Boom, fuck it, go. I got kids by the side of the road going, look, mommy, a parade. <laughs> well, I have to tell you, it is nice to be home again. I, uh, I don't get to Rhode Island much. Uh, let me get to reacquainted with everybody. Hey, you want to turn up the house lights for me, Dave? Turn up the house lights, please. Turn up the house lights. Perfect. You, <laughs> you stupid bastard. What the fuck is wrong with you? Turn up the lights, you dumb son of a we got to get people that speak English. <laughs> what? C. You stupid bastard. You got to put down that pipe, bud. Crazy fuck. That's all I, do. I put up with you. Hey, how you doing? Good, how you stupid doing? bastard. <laughs> fuck you. Crazy son of a bitch. What the fuck are you doing here? You think I need this kind of bullshit? Jesus, I'm just trying to... You fuck. What are you doing? What the fuck? Stop fucking around, you stupid bastard. Okay, now, how you doing? Good. Your name? Norbert. Norbert? Yeah. Oh, I'm not gonna fuck with you. It looks like your parents fucked your life up. I guess. Where are you from, Norbert? East Providence. East Providence. That's where I grew up. I grew up in East Providence. Yeah, I'm a friend of my brothers. So you're a friend of my brothers? Yeah. Oh, that's something to be proud of. I'm not. No, you're not. What do you do, Norbert? I'm a union man. A union man. Oh, so you don't do shit. At sixty-four ninety-five an hour. <laughs> really? So you walk up to a union guy, you go, "Hey, uh, what are you doing?" Hey, I'm on fucking break. I don't need this kind of bullshit. All right? You can call my my union steward. He'll take care of everything for you. You married, Norbert? Yes. 
Now, how long have you been married? 45 years. 25 years, that's good. It's just, who married you? <laughs> oh, you, who are you? No folly in glitch? Then get back in the fucking kitchen. <laughs> Who the fuck let her out here? Hey, Norbert, did, what did you, to keep her in the country? Is that what you mean? <laughs> well, it's crazy. This old guy here I was bothering. I'm sorry, sir. I didn't mean to call you old, but you are. <laughs> Your name? Bruce. Bruce, what do you do, Bruce? Uh, software. Software what? Train, oh, computer shit? <laughs> Fuck you, Bruce. Let me tell you something. <laughs> There's two occupations I can't stand. One is car mechanic. Any car mechanics here? Any car mechanics? Where are you? You're, you're a, no, you're not a car mechanic. Where are you? Who's a car mechanic? What, what, you. You, ma'am? Really, no. If you just go in and blow the guy who works there, you're not a mechanic. <laughs> Really, yeah. You're an intern. <laughs> I can't stand car mechanics because I don't know shit about cars and I know they're fucking making shit up. I get my car, my car broke down, I call him up, I leave the car, I call him up, I go, what's wrong with the car? He goes, uh, right rear Springer rocker arm broke. I said, can you get another one? He said, hell, I've been calling all over town. Look like we're going to have to make one. I said, how much is that going to be? He said, hell, I don't know. I said, can you give me a ballpark figure? He said, ain't even in the ballpark. <laughs> computer people, the same thing. I bought a computer from these people. They've had a computer more than I had. I turned the computer on. Computer looks at me and goes, who the fuck are you? <laughs> so, I t so I take the computer in to get it fixed. I leave it with the guy. I said, what's wrong with the computer? He says, well, you got a bad SCSI port. I said, yeah, well, your wife's a whore. <laughs> I said, how much is that going to be? He said, you think the mechanic fucked you? <laughs> Does he look like uh, something wrong, sir? You okay? Yeah, you. I'm just looking, because you're looking at me like, you know, like an Amish person at Circuit City. <laughs> what is your name? What is it? Paul, what do you do, Paul? Insurance. Insurance? Fuck you, Paul. <laughs> it's a big fuck you night here at the comedy. <laughs> at the Catch Rising Stop. And how long have you been selling insurance? 14. 14. Where, 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 where do you sell insurance? Wherever I can. What? Are you, is that why you're here tonight? What the fuck? <laughs> Anybody need any insurance? Paul's here. <laughs> Come on, get it quick. He's going to leave soon. Are you married as well? Yes, 30 years. 30 years. Wow, that's good for you, Paul. It's not a fucking record. <laughs> You're like, 30 years? Wow. Yeah. Where's your wife? You good? Everything good? Great. Sex good? Excellent. I mean with her. <laughs> yeah, you're insuring your own ass, aren't you? Guys? How did you meet your wife? College. College? Where'd you go to school? No. Where did you go to school? The 70s. I don't remember. Okay, it must have been a big hallway. <laughs> Holy shit, I, I hate to see the reunion. <laughs> Holy fuck, there must be three and a half million people at that fucking thing. It's, <laughs> Jesus, everybody's born in the 70s. Ah. I went to school with you. Where did you go to college? In Connecticut. In Connecticut, where? University of Bridgeport. University of Bridgeport. And you studied... Okay, what, what the fuck? I don't know you, Paul. <laughs> He's looking at me like I study business, asshole. What the fuck's wrong with you? Don't you know anything about me? Weren't you, weren't you around in the 70s? I went to school with you. I gotta tell you something that really pisses me off. When I came back to Rhode Island, does every fucking joke in Rhode Island start with these two Portuguese? <laughs> you people. <laughs> Portuguese are great. There's some people I went to school with, too. Went to grade school with. Where are you? Hey. Hey, how you doing? Oh, yeah, Brian. And, are you, Lori Mayshall? Holy shit. You know, you were the first girl I ever kissed? Yes, I was. 
Yes, you were. You were the first girl I ever kissed. You don't remember kissing me? Well, fuck you, bitch. You took away my manhood and forgot all about it. Weren't you around in the 70s? I went to school with you. It's the light of the night, I guess. God, who else? Who else is here? Where are all the other people? Hey, who's that? Is that Lynn? Lynn Pereira and Brian Kreisinger and Lori Mayshaw and Chris Kavako. Where's Chris Kavako? Hey, how you doing? Donna Greaves is here. Jesus Christ, all the women I never fucked. <laughs> It was a Catholic school. You knew they were ready. <laughs> I remember in Catholic school, we had a nun. She had a board like this. She called it the Board of Education. Oh. Yeah. And she used to put holes in the board to break down wind resistance, you know? <laughs> they knew physics. And she'd take the board and she'd reel back and she'd swat you with it. And it would stick. And she'd pull it off real slow. It used to be like... <laughs> And when you stood back, your ass looked like a golf ball with a smile in it. You know, it was just one of the traumatizing moments of my life. They used to hit, hit us with every fucking thing. Did any, how many people went to Catholic school? Good, 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 good. People who went to Catholic school can't just raise their hand. They got to move it. It's always... <laughs> sister, 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 sister. Well, after the show, we'll, we'll meet out in the, in the lobby and maybe I can make up for old times. <laughs> Look at you ladies here. What's the matter? What's, what, where are your dates? Don't you have dates? It's mom's 50th birthday. It's mom's 50th birthday? Oh, God. Then I, I guess a birthday blowjob is in order. <laughs> Tell your head, you don't want to see this. Look, but don't you have a boyfriend? He's at home. Oh, he's at home? Why, why are you saying it like, oh, he's at home? I'm like, well, fuck him, I'm not dating him. Oh, where are the single women? Who's single? Who's single? How many women are single? Single women, where are you? Where are you? You're single? Do you have a boyfriend? You do? Where is he? Home? What the yeah. fuck is going on? Are you single? Do you have a boyfriend? You do? Where is he? He's a pilot? Really? Where is he flying now? West Palm Beach. Well, fuck, I'll be done before he gets home. <laughs> Really, buckle up. <laughs> Be prepared for a sudden change in cabin temperature. <laughs> and I like the emergency row. <laughs> How are you, sir? Okay. You're not, uh, not you. What am I, cockeyed? I'm looking at this fucking guy. <laughs> Stupid bastard. Like, he's looking at me. I think he's looking at me. Your name, sir? Craig. Craig, what do you do, Craig? I'm a cop. Cop. Where? Cranston, really? Oh, yeah. Fuck you, Craig. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Right? You ain't shit with witnesses, are you? <laughs> Fuck you, you wanna look in my ass, Craig? Come on, look in my ass. All right, look, we got a test, Craig. Follow my finger. <laughs> you fucking people. Why do you always stop us when we're drunk and ask us to do shit? <laughs> the fuck, we're drunk! Hey, could you step out of the car? Are you fucking kidding me? I'm fucked up. They get all these fucking questions they want to ask you, sir. Have you been drinking? <laughs> Would you step out of the car? You know we can hold you. I let him tow me back to the fucking station. I sleep the next morning. I go. That's why I have my license. I, I got really fucked up before I got my license made. I got really fucked up and had my picture taken like that. So when the cop walks up to the car, I give it to him. He goes. Okay, you can go. <laughs> Well, this is better than the shit I had planned, I gotta tell you. 
Let's see. Let's see. People back here. I got people back here. I got. I don't want anybody to feel left out. So I just eat that guy there. The brown shirt there. The brown and a bunch of other shit on it. <laughs> Your name, sir? Paul. Paul. What do you do, Paul? I'm a truck driver. Truck driver. Oh, let me ask you a question, Paul. <laughs> Occasionally, could you people get the fuck out of the way? <laughs> because the truck driver, you'll be driving down the street. Just when you're ready to pass him, he goes, "Watch this." I know. Oh, by the way, my brother Louis's birthday is next week. Give him a nice hand, too. He's going to be, uh, I'm going to be fucking thirty. He's going to be thirty-three uh, in a couple months. But how are you? Your name? Stephanie. Stephanie. Where are you from, Stephanie? Cranston. Cranston. Oh yeah. <laughs> Girls in Rhode Island. I don't know whether they're very over pushy. Where are you from, Cranston? What the fuck? And, uh, are you married? Is this your husband? It is. Good. What happened to your arm? Uh, tore a muscle. You tore a muscle? Oh. <laughs> See, Nick, this is what will happen. <laughs> so you got to watch your muscles. You don't want to tear a muscle. Plus, he's left-handed. <laughs> How did you tear your muscle? <laughs> you were lifting? What were you lifting? You were benching. You were at the gym and you tore a muscle? <laughs> See, it doesn't pay to exercise. It's fucked up. Do you, how much can you bench? Not as much as I thought. <laughs> Answer the fucking question. You can bench 450 pounds? Can you bench a cop from Cranston? You could probably do that with one arm. They don't weigh shit. <laughs> I'll shoot your ass. <laughs> fuck, you gotta clean up. I don't give a fuck. It's... So, how long have you been married? Oh, you looked at her. You looked at her. No. No, uh, you just gave me the no pussy tonight answer, boy. <laughs> as soon as you look, you go, how long have you been married? I'm not gonna get laid tonight, am I? Well, you better get lifted. <laughs> Let's see if you can lift six inches. So, do you, are you married? Do you have a boyfriend? Yes. And there, he's at home too. Yes. You guys just don't, what do you have, ugly boyfriends or something? <laughs> no, you just stay home. I don't want to be seeing what you in public. <laughs> Where are the single women without a boyfriend? Who's single without a boyfriend? Let me find out. Hey, hi, how are you? What's your name? Helena. Helena? Oh, good. You don't have a boyfriend? Oh, that's terrible. You're a beautiful woman. You should have a boyfriend. Well, let me ask you a question. If you had one quality to choose in a man, just one quality, what would it be? Money. What? Yeah, just one quality. Honesty. Honesty? <laughs> You're fucked. We don't do that. <laughs> really, lower your standards, raise your hopes. <laughs> Honesty? <laughs> That's a good one. Okay, I'll be honest. Are you learning anything, Nick? The guy back there, how you doing? Kenny Rogers guy back there in the corner. How are you, sir? Good. Oh, look, yeah, he must be paying. Everybody clapped. Keep buying our drinks. Your name, sir? Drew. Drew? What do you do, Drew? Sales manager of what? Trade shows and expositions. Trade shows and expositions? What are you, run around the neighborhood in a raincoat or something? <laughs> hey! <laughs> Coming soon. <laughs> I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm gonna. This is my friend uh, Danny Dyers I've known for since I was a little kid. He owes me money, you fucking asshole. <laughs> Piece of shit. What? You forgot your wallet. Yeah, well, good. It's, I want you, hey, come over here. I want you to come over here and punch this guy right in the fucking face. <laughs> you can do it. Oh, no. Cop. Oh, no. Oh, no. We'll have none of that. Not in my presence. How long have you been a cop? 20 years. 20 years. Really? You happy with it? You ever shoot anybody? No. 
No? The fuck kind of cop are you? <laughs> Not even just one day you just go, okay. <laughs> oh shit, I didn't know this was loaded. <laughs> You ever, you ever stop a woman for speeding? You ever let her go? <laughs> really? What did she do? Look at you and go, oh no, not another breathalyzer. <laughs> That's right, ma'am, you just blew a 6.2. How's that? <laughs> really, because women can do that. You show them your tits. You know, if, if you pulled me over, I whipped out my dick, what'd you do? You'd not, you'd what? Lock me up? What, so you knew where I was all the time? <laughs> you can turn on the house lights now. I want to talk to you about something that just, uh... How many people here by applause have children? It's hard to raise kids, isn't it? Uh, I, I don't have any kids. My brother's got three kids. My brother's here, too. He's got three kids. Occasionally, he'll let me watch him. You know? <laughs> I remember a while, a lot, years ago, we were all in Orlando, and my brother looks terrible. He's like, uh, uh, from chasing the little bastards around. <laughs> He'd always chase them. Zachary's his oldest. Somebody died, Zachary, 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 Zachary. One, two. What the fuck is that? What is this, wrestling? <laughs> But I remember with, uh, one time we were all in Orlando, and he, I said, well, what are you going to do today? He says, well, I thought I'd take the kids to Disney World. I said, no, look, I'll tell you what. You stay here, relax. I will take the children to Disney World. Yeah. So I show up at Disney World. It's me and the three little kids. Me and the three little kids. We walk up to the little booth. I said, hey, how you doing? It's just me and the three little kids. The guy looked at me and says, that'll be $176. <laughs> I said, it's just me and the three little kids. You know, I don't want to pay for everybody in the fucking line. <laughs> Just me and the three little kids. He says, yeah, that's $176. I said, I haven't even had my ass in a teacup yet. <laughs> and you're charging me $170. I said, for $176, you better be taking me to Hookerland. <laughs> I said, yeah, I want to see a couple of ears right about here. <laughs> yeah, in a small world after all, is it, Mickey? <laughs> God. It's strange, because I, I got to get going here, because I've been up here forever, it seems like, and I just, I, you know, I got to tell you, in, in all sincerity, it's so nice to come home and, and to see old friends and people that I don't get to see very often, and it's, it, just, it just scares me, though, because they got so fucking old, <laughs> and I, I kind of take care of myself when I think about it, but, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful that, that they all came out. Before I go, there are a few things I want to remind you of, it's just, uh, what are you looking at down there? <laughs> what the fuck were you looking at? Were you looking at my dick? Were you looking at my dick? Did you see your mother looking at my dick? She was looking right at my dick. What is wrong with you? I'll give it to you. Really, you don't even have to. You just have to go, hey, I want your dick. And ba-boom, there I go. I'm telling you, and if you can take out your teeth, I'll fucking marry you. It's just... Before I go there, a few things I want to remind you of. Please don't forget all the wait staff and, and the bartenders here at the casino. They work very hard for you, and they do depend upon your generosity. So please be as generous as you can with them, and give them a nice hand for working so hard. Yeah. For those of you who'd like a little souvenir of our evening together after the show, you can pick up my CD, which is called Turn Up the House Lights for Obvious Reasons. <laughs> Let's recap the show. <laughs> there we go. There's Kenny Rogers back there. He's just, he's uh, flashing people is what he does. You got Paul over here sells insurance. This guy here lifts far more than he's capable of lifting. <laughs> this woman is looking for an honest man. <laughs> Here's Norbert, he's union. <laughs> he don't do shit. 
There's some of the people I went to school with. My brother Louis' birthday is next week. My brother Frankie, who's sitting over there wondering why the fuck I ever got a job. I got my nephew Matt, Nick, who's sitting over there, who's just he's sitting over there going, finally I learned something. Uh, who else we got here? We got the girl here whose husband or boyfriend is a pilot. There's Lori Mayshell. There's Donna Greaves. There's a bunch of fucking people. There's Gary. My friend Gary is back. Gary and Paula. You fucking pieces of shit. And, <laughs> and last but not least, we got the cop from Cranston here. <laughs> That's right. Really. How does it feel to have a fucking light in your eyes for a chance? <laughs> not very comfortable, is it? No, follow my finger. <laughs> but you guys can pick one up after the show if you want to. Now, let me tell you something. Standing at the door with the CDs. You don't have to buy a CD, you cheap fucks. But don't act like I'm not there. People walk out, they, when they're walking out, they see me with the CDs, they're like. <laughs> oh, and after the show, my friends and my family, meet, meet me out here. Well, I'll talk to you on the way out. Anyway, uh, listen, uh, I gotta tell you something. I was just in Vegas about a week ago, no, two weeks ago, I guess. Uh, now, and you know that in Las Vegas, you can have sex with a woman for money? Yeah! yeah! <laughs> I'm sitting at the blackjack table, right? I'm playing blackjack, you know, this, this woman walks over, she says, I'd like to get to know you. I said, really? <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> so we're sitting there, we're playing blackjack. She pulls out her cell phone and punches something in it and shows it to me. I look, it says 400. I said, 400, whoa! I said, you have a $400 vagina? She said, yes. I said, can I see it? She said, no. I said, okay, that's cool. So we keep playing blackjack. After a while, I had to go to the bathroom, so I put down a marker to save my spot. I go to the bathroom. A little while later, I come back. She looks at me. She says, God, you've been gone for a while. Where were you? I said, I just saved myself $400. <laughs> How many men have been married more than once? Who's been married more than once? Anybody been married more than once? The cops have been married more than once? See, I don't get that. See, to me, getting married more than once, that's like getting your dick caught in a car door. <laughs> Opening up the door, stepping back and saying, you know, I think I'm gonna try that one more time. <laughs> okay. Who's been married a long time? Who's been married? We got a guy 30 years been married. Who's been married more than 30? Anybody been married more than 30? How long have you been married? 34 years, anybody be 34? 40, who's been married 40? You've been married for 40 years? How many? 45? Holy shit, in a row? Holy shit, who's been married a short period of time? Anybody been married a short period of time? Who's been married, how long, how long? A year, you've been married, anybody less than a year? How long? Six months. What the fuck are you doing here? You should be home just. <laughs> Six months. You're still in that happy stage, you know. Wait, you, you, you have a baby? That's good. Six months. That's usually the amount of time. <laughs> No, but when you've been married six months, you're in that happy stage where you look across the table and you say, oh, God, we're going to be together forever. We're going to be together forever. You've been married 45 years. You look over and you go, fuck, you're going to be here tomorrow, ain't you? <laughs> you ever in bed with your significant other? You're making love all night long. Neither one of you reaches orgasm. Finally, you look at her and you go, what's the matter? Can't you think of anybody either? <laughs> I tried that with a girl. I said, can't you think of anybody either? She says, I'm thinking of Tom Cruise. I said, fuck off, I'm thinking of Tom Cruise. <laughs> It's strange because I got to tell you, no, I, 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 feel, I feel very, very blessed to be able to do this. But you know what's strange? No matter where I travel throughout the world, at one point or another, someone will always walk up to me and ask me this one particular question. Oh, no. They always walk up and they go, Manny, how did you get started in comedy? And for most of us, it started in school. You know, you're the class clown or cutting up. You know, and I told you, I went to a Catholic school, but the teacher would never call on me because she didn't know what the fuck I was going to say. <laughs> Well, I remember one day she's standing in front of the class. She says, okay, class. <laughs> K 
Can anyone give me a three-syllable word and use it twice in a sentence? And I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> but she didn't want to call on me because I'm a little bastard, you know? So finally, I'm the only kid with my hand up. So she says, okay, Manny. I said, the word is beautiful. She says, oh, that's a three-syllable word, but can you use it twice in a sentence? I said, of course I can. <laughs> Last night, my sister came home and told my father she was pregnant. And he said, beautiful. <laughs> Fucking beautiful. <laughs> You guys have been great. God love you. Good night. Thank you. Another round of applause for Manny Alvaro. Ben Hayes.